Spending a night tossing and turning, unable to get any sleep, is not uncommon for many people and may have a variety of causes, including stress, anxiety, and environmental factors. The day afterwards, we can feel like we're in a zombie-like state and often find ourselves fighting the brain fog and grogginess with caffeine. For most people, the sleeplessness does not last more than one or two nights. However, for people with insomnia, this perpetual sleeplessness can become a normal occurrence and completely disrupt their lives and their ability to function. Sleep is of course essential for the body and insufficient sleep can lead to disastrous consequences on the endocrine, metabolic, and immune pathways in the body, which are associated with health issues like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, as well as on the central nervous system, which can potentially lead to symptoms like a lack of focus, anxiety, and hallucinations. Left unresolved, a lack of proper sleep for an extended period of time can ultimately lead to death, and it is an excruciating way to die. This is known as fatal insomnia. The following video shows a man who suffered from fatal insomnia and recorded videos to document the progression of his condition, which he says started after taking an antibiotic. So when my body tired, they say my body asking my system to sleep, you know, my body said, okay, I'm tired, this, that. And it tried to communicate. This is how I picture it, because it's so painful. When it, when it tried to communicate with my head or my brain, my brain also looking forward to sleep, but the activity of the brain is never calmed down. It's been four months since my brain is active. It never sleep. It never want to go down. And when my body asked my brain, that I need to rest and sleep. It's no connection, but there is a feedback. There is a really painful feedback, physical feedback and neuron feedback on my back, on my back, or around my spinal cord. In his own words, I would have my both legs chopped off as an exchange if I could sleep for at least three hour a night without drugs. That's how desperate I am for sleep. This is tragic enough for one person to suffer through, but imagine it runs in the family. Your mother, father, siblings, and even your own children being susceptible to an agonizing death sentence. As nightmarish as it sounds, this has been the case for one family whose suffering from fatal insomnia has been documented for over 200 years. Eighteenth century Venice, Italy, the Renaissance has just drawn to a close, and under the rule of Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II, the political and socio-cultural condition of Italy began to improve. However, things were not improving for one family, who have opted to keep their surname anonymous. Nearly half of all their family members began dying after suffering a seemingly random bout of insomnia, and ultimately succumbing to what doctors attributed to nervous exhaustion, depression, or diseases like encephalitis. In each generation following, nearly half of the family members continue to die of this unexplained illness. Lucia, a member of this family who lost several close relatives, states, It's been a disaster, a brutal suffering. For hundreds of years, family members who suffered from the mysterious disease were considered by doctors to simply be insane, and they would spend their last few months or years locked in asylums. In 1984, their family's days of suffering in silence and never knowing what was behind what felt like a curse ended, when one member of the family, named Silvano, began to see signs that pointed to the onset of this illness. He was sweating profusely and his pupils were visibly constricted, two symptoms that his family members had experienced at the start of their bouts with the mystery affliction. 53-year-old Silvano presented himself to university researchers, stating that he was going to die soon of this mysterious insomnia-related illness. He permitted them to study the progression of his disease in the hopes that they could uncover what was causing it and potentially cure it and free his family of their suffering. The researchers were also able to document video footage of Silvano as his condition progressed, some of which is presented in the documentary Dying to Sleep. The look of fatigue on his face is just overwhelming. He's like a figure, like from an Edgar Allan Poe story, who just who can't sleep, but also can't quite wake up. A lot of people ask, why didn't they just give Silvano sleeping pills? But in fact, they did try to sedate him, but, but it would just put him in some sort of coma. 
Within that year, he did indeed pass away as he predicted, and he donated his brain to the medical researchers. It was shipped to a pathologist in the United States named Dr. Pierluigi Gambetti, who found that while most of the brain appeared to be perfectly normal, the thalamus, located in the center of the brain, was the completely wrong texture and looked similar to a sponge. This immediately indicated that the mysterious illness was due to a prion mutation. After over 200 years, the deadly genetic typo causing this disease was finally identified, and the mystery illness was subsequently named FFI. Fatal familial insomnia is a rare congenital condition of the nervous system. It's caused by a genetic mutation in the PRNP gene, wherein the prions produced by these genes are shaped differently than they should be and they fold incorrectly. This impedes their ability to function properly. There have also been a rare subset of cases wherein the genetic mutation is sporadic and a person has their normal prion protein spontaneously shift into the anomalous shape that causes fatal insomnia. This image shows the thalamus activity of a person with FFI on the left compared to a person who does not have the disease on the right. This abnormality in the shape of the prions mainly affects the thalamus, which is a part of the brain that is primarily responsible for controlling the sleep-wake cycle, as well as for relaying communication between other parts of the brain. FFI also affects other parts of the brain, including the inferior olives which are responsible for motor control. FFI is a progressive neurodegenerative disease and is caused by a decrease in neurons which progresses over time, worsening the symptoms. It is particularly terrifying in that it's often dormant for many years, leaving those who have a family history of the disease worrying if and when they may contract it. The symptoms generally begin between the ages of 32 and 62, but in some cases have begun as young as 18 and as old as 72. The mean age of onset is 51 years old. It affects men and women at an equal rate. The symptoms of FFI often occur in four approximate stages that increase in severity over their duration and vary between person to person. The duration of the disease can span about 7 to 72 months, but it generally results in death 12 to 18 months after onset. The first stage includes sudden insomnia that progressively worsens over a period of approximately four months. This occasionally may be preceded by dementia, but regardless of which symptom is the onset of the disease, most people experience both over time. There may also be minor changes in the person's memory, body temperature, etc. at this point. The second stage includes symptoms such as hallucinations, phobias, delirium, ataxia, meaning uncoordinated and jerky movements, autonomic disorders like high blood pressure, and a lack of appetite. Many also experience hypnagogia, where they are essentially stuck in the pre-sleep stage and feel as if they are just on the edge of a dream but not getting the rest associated with real sleep. These symptoms steadily worsen over a period of approximately five months. Third stage is often where sufferers of the disease experience total insomnia, and completely lose their ability to sleep. This is often accompanied by rapid weight loss and a further worsening of the aforementioned symptoms. This stage generally lasts for approximately three months. The fourth and final stage is where the dementia, which generally begins as confusion or some memory loss, progresses to the point where the person loses their ability to walk and talk. They often become completely unresponsive over an approximately six month period and subsequently pass away due to the disease. The following video shows the swift progression of FFI. The man in the video was hospitalized when he began having trouble sleeping more than one or two hours a night, fidgeting frequently, and having issues with his memory. Prior to the onset of these symptoms, he had no noticeable health issues and worked a full-time job. His wife reported that he was restless and fidgety and always seemed to be in movement. Over the last few weeks, his memory had begun to deteriorate. Okay. This next clip shows him after being hospitalized for a few months. His condition has steadily deteriorated and he appears to be in constant pain. Are you in pain? Yes, you are in pain.
It's important to note that FFI does not always mean the total absence of sleep, and some patients are able to sleep for brief periods of time, but it's not meaningful sleep. Their sympathetic nervous system is unbalanced due to the disease, causing the person suffering with FFI to be unable to achieve full REM, meaning rapid eye movement, or SWS, meaning slow wave sleep. This leaves them feeling utterly exhausted and seeming to be unresponsive or in a stupor. Currently, there is no proven treatment or cure for FFI, and symptoms can only be managed and eased to provide the most comfort possible for the person suffering from the disease. In this video, you can see Silvano experiencing this type of half-awake sleep, where he acts out what is happening in his dreams. Like combing his hair, or buttoning up his pajamas. And once, he even gave a kind of military salute. I asked him, what was that about? He said, I was dreaming that I was a guard at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Since 1986, there have been an estimated 60 cases of FFI worldwide, and 24 cases of sporadic FFI have been noted in medical literature. The vast majority of cases of FFI, other than the sporadic onset incidences mentioned previously, are autosomally dominant. This means that they incur when a person inherits one copy of the mutated PRNP gene from either of their parents. A person with a specific mutation has a 50% chance of passing it on to their child. One patient in a case study, referred to as DF, was diagnosed with FFI in 2001. Ten months into the illness, he was experiencing some symptoms such as confusion and trouble sleeping. He decided to purchase a motorhome and take a road trip across the United States, doing so safely by taking many breaks to rest and try and sleep until he felt sufficiently refreshed. Eventually, a caretaker joined him on this trip as the disease progressed. He also wrote a book during this time. DF partook in many strategies in an attempt to better his quality of life and extend his lifespan including vitamins, meditation, sensory deprivation, and exercise. While he did ultimately succumb to the incurable disease, 25 months after being diagnosed, he managed to drive his motorhome 950 miles in a single 15-hour stretch and write his book during a point in the illness when most patients are almost completely devastated by the disease and are unable to walk or talk. He also lived about a full year longer than the average person with FFI. Likely due to these strategies improving his quality of life, DF was also able to give insight into the suffering he endured, which is unique seeing as by that stage many patients are incapacitated. Unlike the typically mute FFI patient whose subjective serenity is unknowable, DF described his oneiric sleep as extremely gentle and pleasant. Like entering a room filled with everyone who he would want to encounter, including deceased friends and relatives who would tell him that everything will be all right. In his words, to the outside world, I'm dead and gone, but to myself, I'm still here in this wonderful place, and it is they who have disappeared. His waking REM was multi-sensory and included images, voices, and scents. It was experienced as a form of knowing everything about himself with no more hidden secrets. As might be expected from a sustained handshake between the right and left hemispheres, DF's conscious mind experienced himself in a global way. He described his unconscious as filled with wounded children who bore poor witness to events that had injured them, unable to logically evaluate or rise above these damaging experiences. His FFI put him in the unique position to soothe these children with adult insight, which he often did in the form of written letters when he was offline. In the current day, there have been several noted cases of this rare and deadly disease. In 2012, FFI struck the Webb family in Australia. Haley Webb remembers first her grandmother falling ill with dementia, hallucinations, and insomnia, and later her mother falling victim to the same fate, starting with forgetfulness, a loss of motor control, and auditory hallucinations of her baby that had passed away at six months old crying out to her. Haley recalls that the disease was incredibly aggressive, and her mother went from showing little to no symptoms to one month later calling her by a different name and having no idea who she was. She sadly passed away six months later. Haley and her brother Lachlan have unfortunately inherited the mutation that causes FFI. 
They're currently taking part in a study at the University of California to aid in finding a cure for this terrifying disease. The study at the University of California is being conducted by a married couple of Harvard graduates named Sonia Valaba and Eric Minikel. Sadly, the reasons for conducting this study are due to their personal experience with FFI. Sonia Valaba recalls the sudden onset of the disease when her mother was a completely healthy and ordinary 51-year-old woman. Their family did not have any history of the disease. Over the course of about one month, her mother quickly deteriorated from symptoms such as unexplained weight loss, issues with her memory, and disturbances in her speech. She developed severe dementia, paranoia, and constant confusion. She sadly passed a few weeks later. Sonia and her husband Eric quit their jobs in law and engineering respectively and began studying to get their PhDs at Harvard Medical School in biological and biomedical sciences. Sonia states that they have run mouse studies and want to launch a further round of biomarker studies. The couple post updates of their studies to their blog, cureffi.org. Despite not finding an identifiable cure as of yet, the couple remains confident in their studies, purporting that their data makes them feel like the drug that they are developing could work. Sonia said that the time to start spreading the word about this is now. The first drug into the first patient might be within five years. We hope people will see a cause for optimism and a reason to get involved. If you would like to aid them in their research, please consider donating to their nonprofit organization called Prion Alliance. The link will be in the description box below. As of now, we end this video knowing that there's currently no cure for FFI. Imagining how it must feel to be a member of a family with FFI, knowing that your life as you know it could come to an agonizing and inevitable end as you succumb to the disease is absolutely heartbreaking. All we can do is hope that the hard work being put into scientific research will soon yield a cure for fatal familial insomnia. In Sonia's own words, I feel really lucky we're finding more of a scientific footing and grounding for that optimism over time. Now we can see concrete reasons for optimism. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting me by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. I hope to explore more oddities and mysteries with you. Our world is a strange one, and I hope you join me in learning about some of the more curious and eerie happenings. Thank you.